If you live inside the UK like I do, it is generally accepted that it's either too hot, too cold, too miserable, too sunny, uh, too wet, too foggy, too this, too that, all that I know is. <laughs> it's time for a 6 versus 6 Supreme Commander Forged Alliance forever. I hope you're doing well. I hope this finds you well. I look forward to bringing you this game because not only is it really good, it's been a few days since I've done one. Patrons, do be aware that there is now the seventh cast on there, so if you are interested in helping out the channel, I appreciate it very, very much. Help is always welcome, but never expected, so do check that out if you haven't done for a while. But for now, let's crack on with today's game. If you are new to the channel or this is your first time checking out, big hello, welcome, nice to have you here. Somebody call security. Today, this one, 1508 average rating, you see the spread there. Uh, just over 500 points or so and game going down a couple of days ago on the 11th of june and so if you're ready let's uh strap in tight because we're about to jump on in in jump on in in yes we are there we go all right let's get on that yeah i've got my fan going for the last couple of days it's so hot man and you know not that i mind it i love the heat when I'm outside in the sun, but when you're inside, you're either trying to sleep or trying to do a cast. It's not always the best, is it? All right, so we've got a cyber and administrative, <laughs> administrative uh, structure to kick things off with. How excited is that? You know, there'll be people saying, yeah, get on with it. Come on, your, your intros are far long enough without focusing in on pointless stuff. <laughs> I know. All right, let's make a start then. Uh, we'll unpause the game. We'll straighten off the camera, we'll zoom out, and we are treated to this game thanks to the old uh, Neuroxis map gen. Uh, Supreme Commander music on today, let's get rid of that little doodah there. And before we start introducing the players, uh, let's take a look at map size, uh, see if I can fit one in correctly. There we go, it's bang on 15 by 15. And so with that said and done... Uh, team 1 are in the top today. These are the purple guys. Team 2 in yellow down on the lower west side. And for no other reason than they are team 1. Let's make a start there. By the way, there is a 249 point advantage to the guys on the lower west side. Which works out at roughly 41 points per player. Uh, despite Supreme Scoreboard saying it's more like 17. Either way, let's make a start then. So we've got Legard Domain here. Uh, with his skillful and deceptive practices going Seraphim in Karki Green. He's a 1600 going first land. Uh, moving to the forward slot then for Team 1 in grey is Stocksnet. 1400, we've seen this guy before. UEF, uh, him and his uh, denying the... Uh, <laughs> let's leave the uh, nuclear uh, uranium heavy water... In Oh, whatever those machines were called alone today. We've got C2118 Freedom here in Ferrari Red. He's going as Aeon, having gone first land, now going on his Hydro. And then last on the front line here is Literal. We've seen this guy before as well. He's the 1800 in green going Aeon as well. Uh, the two rear slots then for Team 1. Uh, first off up here in the Lilac, we've got... I'm just going to go with Ghosts. Uh, he's a 1300 cyber where he is. There he is going first land as well. And then last but not least for Team 1 in Sky Blue in UEF. Uh, we have, if we can find him. Where is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Smithers. Yeah, for those of you wondering why, uh, you know, two or three months ago I missed that Paragon in that cast. Well, there's your answer. The guy was right in the middle of his base and I still couldn't see him. Either way, here we go. Smithers, he's a 1400 going first land. And spitting out engineers in the usual way. That's a pretty decent base, actually, for an air slot. All right, let's start introducing Team 2, then. See if we can get this round done. We've got Kabanov here. He's a 1600 going as orange. He's UEF as well, having gone first land there. Here in white, we've got Kloa. What's it? Kloa Reicher Klaus. Here he is uh, in Seraphim uh, with his uh, short temperament there. Uh, 1400 as white moving further on to the right we've got uh, Ormen der Ritter we've seen this guy before he's uh, Ermin the Knight apparently in electric blue going Aeon there with a very nice distance build onto the plateau and that was technically his second uh, factory so first second and third land 
as we finish off the front line here. For Team 2 is Iza. He's the highest rate player in today's game. The 1800 in purple there. And I believe our first Cybran as well that we've introduced. Actually, no. Ghost was the first. He's the second. The first for his team anyway. And the last couple of players then. We've got Yehonza. He's a 1700 also going Seraphim. Not seeing this guy on the channel. So welcome to you, sir. Nice to meet you on Tactical Takeover. And then last but not least... We've got Barmley. He's here in yellow. He's an 1100. Going Aeon in one of the air slots here for his team as well. Getting a nice fast upgrade. All right, with that, 3 minutes 46. Uh, the introduction there is complete. Let's also take a little look while we're waiting for things to unfold a little bit. On the whole reclaim side of things, we heard some early engages there. But there we see... Lots of mass on the screen dotted around in these clumps. You can see there's hundreds of mass scattered all over. And if we zoom in, we can see uh, there's lots of stones on this one. So we've got some larger ones, not too many. But each of these uh, rocks here is 10 mass. Certainly the medium-sized ones upwards. And I'd, I'm not going to even try and count that. But you can see there's thousands upon thousands of mass. But it's not centrally located it's evenly dotted all around the map, and that's going to encourage lots of players to produce lots of engineers and send them here, there, and everywhere. So with that, uh, it's 4 minutes 44, and wouldn't you know it, it's actually 14.44, and 44 seconds by me as well, so uh, all the fours are showing up. Uh, I don't know why I'm bothering to tell you that, because it makes no difference whatsoever, does it? But, you know, you get lots of exciting little pointless facts here thrown in for free. All right. C2118 Freedom. Uh, getting some bombs away there on Ritter, the knight. And he's going after the commander and the splash there from the Aeon Bomber. Big enough to pick off uh, the mass point as well. And that's forcing the knight to produce Tech 1 anti air. We've also got interceptors here from C2118 as well. Little attack over here from Iza gets picked up. Does bag himself a couple of mexes along the way. Literal's commander in there preventing a run by on... What? It's not quite a plateau, is it? It's certainly elevated, but it's got three sort of slopes to it that definitely favour Team 1, this particular plateau up north. Lots of shooting going on. We've got a nice little breakthrough over here. A guard domain pushing through. And I suspect he'll be grabbing these as well. Forces Cabin off to bring some forces aside. Who does again have a nice forward engineer there? Seems... Uh, this was the guy who perhaps sort of went like this, but most of his work getting undone now, uh, thanks to this little platoon. Runs into equal looking numbers here from Kabanov, but Kabanov's going to be better able to reinforce this area. Kabanov also with an artillery piece that will be able to pick this off from range, and Ligard Domain uh, realises, yeah... He's probably got numbers. He's got the reinforcements coming through. I shall back off Legard Domain here with a nice forward pressing scout. We'll take a look in the middle. Omen de Ritter with the Aeon versus the Aeon. And so no range advantage here. It's going to come down to numbers and micro. Neither player fancying to push that one. Ezen going for the gun. He's got the Cyber Commander. It's 90%. He's got a couple of Mantis assisting. And seven minutes. Uh, it's going to be done inside 7 and 30. And so that's a pretty fast gun there. Uh, we see further back here, Literal. And he's going for the Tech. He's the Aeon there. And both of these players are fighting on sort of two fronts. We've got this here and this here. So... No real advantage to either player because they're both having to fight like that, which is... I'm just wondering why that is. And I suspect the answer is because 
Ritter here together with Freedom. They're taking sort of the plateau positions. They are spilling some units across here and here. Uh, so it's a very even front. Both teams sealing off this area. I find that interesting. Nobody fancies it. Got a fast tech upgrade over here. Stuxnet with the T2 PD creep. And if we take a look over here, Kabanov, he's already got himself the gun. And this is Nano Repair. So 8 minutes, 25 seconds. The UEF commander is ready to rock and roll. And I suspect Legard Domain is going to know about it. Who is Tech 2? And so no gun yet. Although he is the Seraphim, he could get gun very quickly. Should he wish. And again, Legard Domain having cleared out this area very nicely. I suspect Kabanov's going to push through there in a minute. We'll take a look over here. Ice versus Literal. See here, we've got Literal pushing down on the south side. Ice breaking through on the north. A little probe and attack in the middle. That's not going to go anywhere. Ice has got enough numbers there. Interestingly, some very forward uh, operated PGENs. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. That's, uh, he's realizing a little late. He's short on power. But this here is a very forward operating grid belonging to literally he's got four factories here and he's up against a commander with gun and i'm not seeing anything in the area to support this he's got a tech 2 asylum the mobile shield there belonging to the own i suspect here literal tried to get a little too much too quick he went for upgrades on the commander he must have cancelled that tech 2 because he's got rate of fire we saw him going for tech 2 before he didn't have the rate of fire there Somebody could let us know if that was indeed. Kabanov this time trying to break through. But there's more than enough there from Legard Domain to prevent it. Who has got himself enough tech two-point defense uh, to force Kabanov back. Despite having both gun and nano. Yeah, so this is a sure sign the player's given up. He pauses all of the factories. Isa continues to push through with his commander, leaves his supporting units to tie that up. Perhaps like to see Ritter hand these units off, or at the very least, help support Isa there. And as if he could hear me through the passages of time, he does move those up. A lot of flares here. And again, I'm seeing this used more and more by the Elms because they do take two shots per commander to kill unlike any other light assault bot which makes them just increases their potency massively yeah and here we see the is he gonna hang around to finish it off i'd be very surprised if he doesn't even just leave one mantis behind to wrap that up i am a little surprised there and i do wonder if uh, literal is going to recognize that and resume construction literal who's just about Got enough down here, but I do just think if he's wanted, he could brush all this aside. I mean, he's outnumbered at least three to one down here is literal. Peter breaks through there with a couple of, well, more than a couple. The squad does manage to get a single mass point for his bother. This here looking increasingly strong now. The top side, uh, Team 1 going very heavy on the static point defense. Klaus does have himself gun as well as Nano, but look at how many Tech 2 point defense are pouring in on his position. Yes, he might be able to get one of those points. He doesn't even stick around. Oh, he does finally. That's close though, man. 4,000 hit points and the point defense still rain in. And Stuxnet is going to chase him away with another point defense build there, the Tech 2. So this here looking very strong for Team 1. See Ligard Domain very heavy on his spam. Uh, Stuxnet, who I can't see, has built anything. It's all point defense. I don't see a single tank, which is great until the other guy decides to drop you or something like that. Uh, he would have nothing in response. Will the team recognize it? I'm not sure. 
A lot of commanders grouping up in the middle now. We see here freedom together with Ritter and Smithers flying in as well on his star lift. Well placed artillery piece there with five kills but some lovely artillery here from Freedom firing up onto the plateau and he may be able to pick off that artillery piece if he aims it right. Here's the drop now and so that makes it a two versus one favouring team one up top. They do have two commanders in this area and Ritter here finds himself surrounded. He's got two commanders behind him. He does have a lot of supporting units. 13 and a half minutes. Rita is still pretty much full health, but he's got to back off. But what's this? A shed load of mercies from Freedom. One, two, three, four, five. All of them connect. And with it, the Ritter rides off into the sunset. Having gone up, the first player down. Team two find themselves now six versus five. Or one player deficit. Base gets handed over to Iza, who is the strongest player in the game. He's going to take command. Quick look back up top. Klaus has got a lot of these walking point defense now. These little Ilshis, they're going up. I just wonder, are they able to get this? Well, yes, but it's going to cost them every time they knock one of these out. You know, it's... Is he going to stick around to get these? See how many kills these point defense are getting. Most of them averaging 10 or more. And the further these units push through from Klaus, the more losses they're going to take. But they do successfully take out all of these forward point defenses there from Stuxnet. Problem is... Legard Domain's got so many units back here, even if they are mostly Tech 1, they will be able to prevent these units here from Klaus running by. That was a very successful push, though, from Klaus. That was a lot of very annoying point defense. And at 15 minutes, quick look here. Stuxnet, well, here's why he's not responding. He's going for Tech 3. Well, somebody that's done nothing but walk Tech 2 point defense out as UEF. Is there any mystery what he's going to do once he gets to Tech 3? Does anybody want to hazard a guess? I'll give you three, but you're probably only going to need one. Smithers uh, very far forward. Still a little concern there for him at this stage of the game. And uh, flying around as well. I do like it. It's just dodgy. It's dicey. We're at the ASF stage. And I know some will say, well, it's because we don't snipe ACUs anymore. It's bad for business. Well, we saw Ritter get sniped. He's a 15. Smithers is only a 14. And that's right around, or you could argue, ever so slightly below the average. But our first loyalist on the line here. The problem is he's up against three Harbs as well as uh, some other Aeon spam there from Freedom. And so that's only going to go the one way. And yes, was it a surprise? Not really. We've got our first Ravager out here from Stuxnet from Team 1. And that's going to fire into that static base there belonging to Kabanov who, as far as I'm aware, is only at the Tech 2 stage. And so this Ravager's going to have a lot of shots for free. And there's the second one online now as well. And let's guess what's going to come after two. Is he going to build a third? Does anybody want... <laughs> is that predictable? I don't know. Somebody will say, yeah, but you checked this game out before to make sure it didn't desync. Ah, but I've got a little method... Uh, that makes it a surprise. I cover up the screen for those curious with this uh, black, with this little box that just leaves this little peep through. Not, it's not a physical box. It's on uh, OBS. Somebody said, I don't care. Just get on with the game. Get on with the game. Yeah, there's a black, like a black box that covers the entire OBS. I'm talking an image here. And there's a little gap in the middle where the desync message would appear. That's how you do it. 
little top tip there for any other casters. If you want to check the game desyncs without ruining it for you, there you go. He's now breaking through freedoms. The units that he did have all, all gone, all down. He's just left with spam. And I'm not seeing very much to stop this at all. We've still got at least three tech, three units here from Isa pushing through. Perhaps like to see that loyalist brought back a little bit. Needs some vet. You don't want the uh, T3 unit that's most heavily damaged on the front. Well, unless, of course, you're running up against engineers. Freedom's trying to rush together some emergency point defense. And he does have a couple of tech two here from Literal as well. And pumping some harbs through. That will be enough to shut that push down, which is just over the halfway mark. Look at Smithers flying around to where he's needed. I'd be interested to see what his commander is. Uh, come on, let me let me select the commander, please. Gun, nano, shields. All right, that's a decent commander to bring in as and when it's needed. And is enough to, uh, I don't know if that forced Ease back, but it was uh, certainly all that it took. And Stuxnet over here. Starting to push with his tech three point defense. We've got six of them now. Oh, sorry, five and a Sam site. Let's see here, Kabanov's base has been pushed back. Let's see where it once was and where it is now. And that's going to continue to retreat. He does have some uh, artillery pieces and he is now working on a Ravager himself. Just make you question, will it be enough? And I think it's time for a split. We're seeing a push here on both sides. Let's just temporarily get rid of the scoreboard. Got a big action here. We've got a push over here. Kabanov's pushing into this. Point defense creep. We've got legend here. Oh, Lego Domain, I beg your pardon, with his units. But all of these units here from Kabanov, just so many point defense here. It's not going to go anywhere. Over here, Isa pushing in. Smithers together with the hubs there, just enough to push him back. Got a solitary uh, hub over here from Isa, but that's running straight into Freedom's commander. And so with that, it's all back to over here. On the upper east side, the guard domains pushing right into Kabanov's base, who was just about able to hold versus this, and it's a relief there that two of the three Ravagers on the very front were taken out. And he's just about got enough here to hold. His priority is to build more shields. And then his engineers rushing tech one point defense and Ligar Domain is pulling back. Look how heavily damaged Stuxnet is. Oh, how has this happened? Tech three artillery or what? He just gets under a shield. That was so close. Uh, Ligard Domain's Tech 3 Seraphim shields halfway done. He is trying to create a new one. A Tech 3. I don't know, man. I, again, always prefer the Tech 2 shield first. You could always upgrade it to Tech 3. Because this only takes one shot to destroy. <laughs> the shield there just about holding. It cracks open and he takes one. He's 100 hit points. <laughs> man. Three bullseye tech two artillery shells all hit the commander. That was a lot of luck or bad luck, depending on who you were rooting for there. And with it, five versus five, it's brought back. Got another push over here, bit of an ASF fight. Freedom's got anti air in the area. And we've also got a Monkey Lord here from Ghosts as well. Pushes in. With its long range uh, rocket cannon. Or plasma cannon. I don't know what they are. Cannon. It's 
brilliant, brilliant aspect of the Monkey Lord. Lots of pings going down. I'd like to see Freedom's uh, Harb stay near with. And I guess they're backing off. Oh, well, here's your answer why. Isa with a GC full health. That's been spotted, I suspect. We've got lots of scouts in the area here for Team 1. And so they're backing off. No way that the Monkey Lord can defeat the GC, even with these Harbs. Although the Monkey Lord is going to get a few free shots off as it does retreat. Minute 22, 45 ghosts has to go. Uh, he quits. And yeah, don't quit inside other people's bases. Look at all that build power that went. If you have to go for whatever reason, you know, at least set yourself walking out of bed. At least outside the shield bubble, Let's, uh, if there is one. Either way, he has to go. Apparently so. Ejects. Is the question, uh, somebody says he needs to go. Smithers says he needs to go. Uh, so their team aware. He's with a few bots over here. He is against tech. He does lose a brick. He's going for the other hub. It's going to be close, but he does get it. I wonder if he's going to keep him. He's up against the obsidians, which are a decent tank. But they have fallen behind slightly. It's going to be very close. But he does get away. He does get away. There is some artillery up here, though, from Literal. <laughs> Look at these sniper bots still going after the bricks. We've got 110 hit points out of 7,500. This one at 47 out of 82. <laughs> Those are the luckiest two bricks I've ever seen. I can't believe they've gone and away from all of that, as well as the sniper bots. So a little moment then in the pause of action. Let's take a look at mass totals. Brilliant English there, hey. In the moment of the pause of the action. Telling you. Shakespeare in the making. 1.2 million versus 1.03 at the time. I read that favoring team one. And so that's quite a significant advantage. 10 to 15% uh, favoring the guys up top there. And I suspect, in large part, that's because over here, you know, the split would be right around there. And we can see here Legarde Main is well beyond that. And crucially, these three mass points here that Legarde Main has been able to tech up and cap off at tech three, making a significant difference overall. We see a similar kind of thing down here. Uh, Isa without his. We see over here that Literal's got his. And over here as well, literal encroaching beyond the 50 way back. So where you look, uh, the northern team slightly ahead. My cat sprawled out on the floor, stretched long. She can, she knows it's far too hot. We've got a little push over here from Kabanov, meanwhile, as we get back into the game. And we've got these uh, capped off artillery pieces to increase their rate of fire from Ligard Domain, living up to his uh, sneaky underhand tactic name but when you run into a bunch of purses or the purses run into those they're not going to last long that was a nice pick up there from Kabanov and I'm now hearing as we uh, edge towards 26 minutes it's once again time for another split pushes in multiple parts of the map we've got this over here uh, team 2 push we've got team 1 Pushing on the lower west, or oh, the lower east side, towards the west. And the Garda Main's base is going. We've got the nuke passing overhead. We'll take, we'll just zoom out temporarily on the right to see what happens there. And I'm not seeing any nuke defense there. That's literal main base. Gonna eat one. Team 2 needed something. They were, of course, 10 or 15% behind. And that's going to help equalize that somewhat. This push as well here from Team 2. Looking very successful. We'll focus back in on this push from Team 1, however. Two Monkey Lords and a GC. Running into a Megalith. Megalith backing off. Spam going forward. 
One of the Monkey Lords going down. Megalith and Monkey Lord versus GC. There is a Monkey Lord in tow. Got a few Tech 3 units as well here from Team 1. First order of business. They seem to be interested in that Monkey Lord. Very successful push here from Team 2. Those three mass points that we were talking about currently getting swept aside. The Monkey Lord here from Team 2 goes down, however. The GC is still alive. And I don't believe this. I think it's going to get it. And it does. The two experimentals remain. Still got this clockwise motion of a rotation taking place on the map. The right screen that you see here is on the southern side of the map. The left hand side, what you see, is taking place on the north. Monkey Lord here from Iza in the nick of time going up against enemy Monkey Lord that's full health. Does have a few bots in tow. He does have these uh, drone kennels that he may wish to try and assist. It's going to be very close, but the GC goes down first. Use your kennels to reclaim or rebuild or assist shield or something. I don't believe this. The attack from the north is starting to peter out. There's a chicken on chicken engage. Go and reclaim the GC. The enemy monkey lord go on all these fighter bombers. Oh no, Iza gets picked up by the enemy GC. I don't believe this. Iza is picked off. That was never going to happen until it did. I don't believe that. That GC was so heavily damaged and yet kept going. A lot of fighter bombers over here. And that will finally shut that attack down. The two attacks do peter out, but the damage is done. The strongest player in the game is picked off. So at first glance, that may seem a somewhat even trade. Problem is, all of this mass has now been dumped into the area favouring Team 2. There is a bit of a follow-up attack here from Freedom, but it's not much. Silver lining, though, for Team 1. They do have the air dominance, it would seem. They are now pulling back and, of course, got themselves the high-rate player. Look at these kennels here belonging to Johanza. He's got so much mass in the area. He's also got a GC, full health. Let's have a little look there. Well, we've got 65, 24, uh, thousand, there's another 66 there. We're talking 200,000 mass there on the doorstep for Team 2. Who continuing to press up here. Cabin off with his purses. And they're shooting at some of these ASF that don't land in the best place ever. And they do seem to be primarily focused on the mass options here from the guard domain. Notice they're surrounded by enemy units, but they're not shooting at them. They're going for the mass options first. So that's somebody making use of the target in priority mod. As we roll around to the 30th minute, a counter-attack now from the guard domain. Two chickens... bunch of titans here trying to run around the chicken but it ain't happening i don't think uh legard domain wise to it brings this forward chicken back also got a bit of an air engage down south smithers pushing into the inferior air there from barmley but he is fighting over the top of your Hans and sam sites who's got asf of his own as well as these uh tech two fighter bombers belonging to the seraphim chickens having dealt with that little uh, attempt of a run by or at least a distraction attack and now walking into tech 3 point defense this time from Kabanov, but I don't think he's got enough they are trying to get some roast chicken on the menu for tonight and I suspect two chickens versus uh, three or four Cerberus turrets is only ever going to go the chickens way nice little push through the center from C2118 Freedom with a few bots Running into Johansa's forward mass options. Not failing what we're talking about. Stuxnet asks, is this team planning for failure? It's your RT, I guess, 
Uh, Stuxnet, of course, uh, somebody taken out on Team 1. And C2118's attack there with the uh, Harbs runs into the chicken. There we go. These Harbs aren't going to get anything else done. And so just loses one, perhaps two mass points there, does Johansa, for that attack. Not too bad. We've got a row of Tech 1 anti air here uh, from Johansa. As my mouse decides to uh, jump across the screen. Never done that before. Yeah, this is a bit problematic now. We've also got Support Commander on the front line from Literal, who is starting to reclaim a lot of this mass. But there are a GC with a couple of chickens now from Johansa pushing through on the south side. The Support Commander going down. If just take a look over here. One chicken from Klaus. Up against three. I'll let you guess which way that's going to go. It's out here. Johansa with a very important counter-attack. Secures a lot of the mass behind. I'd like to see somebody on his team. Still four players there. Uh, send units forward. GC and the chicken now going up against this. Very forward operating base from Literal. Uh, he's got a Rambo commander. He's going to have to run, but this ain't going to work. Gets a perimeter station online just in time to realise, oh shit, we got problems. My little run by over here from Freedom. Six kills, a little raid. Annoying at best. And once again, a moment of pause just briefly. 33 minutes. The map this time looking much more 50-50 split. If we take a look at the incomes, 2.3 versus 1.9 thousand mass per tick so around a 20 percent advantage still favoring team one and we're now seeing some tech three static artillery coming in and oh you were just inside to witness the shield there from Johansa. i suspect uh, the next round or two will connect correctly and take that out big air engage now smithers and barmley like to see Johansa get stuck in with his ASF as well. We see here Literal certainly coming in. Johansa's got a couple of bouncers in the area. Who's thinking about the attack and does then push, but has taken or given enough time there for Literal to get his GCs online. I think it's that time for a split once more. We've got the three chickens over here from Leg and Law. Big Tech 2 fighter bomb run on one of the enemy GCs there from Literal. One of the chickens goes down. We've got another one reinforcing. We've got numerous chickens here from Leg and Law going down. Leg and Domain. I beg your pardon. I keep calling him. I think in Legend Law. Either way, he's lost a second. And that's going to take the third. That's a big win for Team 2 there. This here, however, looks much more in favour of Team 1 on this occasion. Down goes the second. Just one chicken remains. And he is up against two GCs and numerous bots. The chicken is walked forward so that the Ion Storm can take out a little bit, as much of these units here from Freedom as possible. Or as many as possible. And we'll split back there. So pretty much 50-50 so far. It's very neck and neck. Down south, I just get the feeling every time there's a really big crucial fight, Team 1 are breaking through, then Team 2 come with a counter-attack and it goes back and forth. It's just, you know, Team 2 were unable to capitalise on this mass. We saw this on the screen a little while ago. We do see engineers in the area now from Team 2, but they've been forced to work on some point defense, but there's more than enough bots here from 2118 Freedom to brush that aside. This is mostly Harbs as well. Uh, they will be able to stop and reclaim some of the mass, should they wish. Also, with a few bots from the north side, we've got a lot of air here from Barmley. Tech 1, 
We've got gunships from Johansa. And the artillery continues to rain through. Steik, we're seeing some artillery over here now as well. Kabanov with his first duke it is surrounded. We're also seeing a couple of sats in the area from the guard domain. So T1 uh, sending sats over. Their priority seems to be the other guy who's going artillery. And there seems to be a lot of air here from Johansa at the Tech 2 stage. The gunships, and they're just about able to hold this off. He's also got a crucial chicken that picks off the GC. This was massive. There's a lot of bots here, but I suspect the chicken with all this air will get it. It's going to be close. But yeah. Freedom realizes the writing's on the wall and he's trying to back off with as many units as he can. He sends a couple forward to try and distract the chicken who clearly can't be in two places at once. Look at all these gunships here from Yonza. It's not often we see this many Tech 2 gunships at this stage of the game. They're completely overwhelming these walking SAM sites, the Redeemers who can only shoot at one unit at a time. They do get the kill, but it takes them so long to reload. Kind of like the Percy, overwhelming damage. Just lacks a little on the rate of fire. Six minutes, 45. And what's this? Barmely has built... He's got a... This isn't himself. This is a support commander. He's got a stealth gen. And Team 1 have got no idea it's there. And that's kind of important because we've got two artillery pieces here from Smithers. As well as a massive air grid. And Smithers, but for no reason than just because, flies over his air repair pads. Oh, oh, oh. That is a lot of bad luck there for Barmley. We've still got an attack down here. I don't think it's going to matter too much. So here we've seen these attack missiles now from Barmley. The gig's up. There's the pings. Smithers recognises it. He's rushing up some TAC missile defence. We can already hear some of them firing. There's some more. And so that's going to nuke that base. We've got this big attack over here, though. One of the GCs from Team 2 is down. Klaus is desperately trying to get the second chicken. It's going to be close. We've got a lot of supporting units here from Kabanov as well. But Legard Domain knows these Tech 3 Seraphim shields. Maybe what's needed. Oh, with the sat as well. The GC just gets the chicken. That's going to be a lot of splash there on friendly territory. And yeah, these bombers here going after the TAP missile launchers. Though unfortunately weren't able to get anything done. The guard domain does have a little bit of damage on his commander, but that's all. I think that's possibly down to the Tech 3 artillery. But I mean, look how much is over Kabanov's base now. We've got three sats. We've got at least three pieces of artillery raining in. He's repaying the favour. But he's only got one. And the problem is now, it's a fourth sat. All of T1's long-range weaponry is going to come down on Kabanov's base. And as soon as it cracks through and breaks his base... All of that fire is then going to get directed elsewhere. The Hans are just about holding down here. Team 1 looking increasingly dangerous. I just, you know, I love this combination here. Freedom with all of these bots. We've got the experimentals from Freedom as well as Literal. The artillery rains down over here there's only oh there is a second piece somewhere where's that coming from that's from here the emissary from klaus not yet with any kills does have the seraphim shields Forty minutes 
Oh, there's a lot down here going on. There's a lot. I mean, look at this here, how effective this little trick is from Freedom. It's just enough to chip away at Johansson's base. We've got Freedom here with another GC. There's a lot of air, though, from Team 2. I suspect they'll be able to take that GC out. Five sats over here now. And they're starting to crack through Kabanov's base. Kabanov, who does have the shield on his commander. Oh, just 41 minutes almost. He gets the shield on, but there's so much artillery together with the sats. I can't see this lasting more than a few seconds. He gets the shield on in the nick of time. He then tries to upgrade it to Tech 2, Tech 3. I beg your pardon. All the shields are down. His base is wide open. A Tech 3 blinks on in the nick of time. He gets another Tech 2 online. But I think you can tell where this is going. The fusion goes up. The splash damage with it. Another critical round lands in. Another one lands in. I can't see this lasting, can you? Kabanov goes. His commander's shield has broken. Oh, it's up again just, but it's not going to last long. He's defending his artillery piece to the very end. But again, all of this firepower from Team 1 is going to get directed elsewhere momentarily. And I think that's going to be it. Kabanov's base has gone. He's trying to get mobile shields in. He's not giving up. I mean, man, give this guy an A for effort. He's still going for it. Oh, and it's all just gone. And the Sats are now focusing in on Kabanov. He's got nothing left. He's 6,000 hit points. And there's one Sat on his case. In comes the artillery. And he's out of it. Very, very well played there, Kabanov. Ultimately defeated by Smithers, at least on paper. We've got another commander. Or rather, new defensive new, should I say, on the south side. Trying to destroy a lot of what Team 1 were trying to push through. They do manage to keep a GC. A lot of gunships here from Johansa. As we start getting close to the 43rd minute. Don't forget now all this uh, long range uh, game ending rates of artillery that were now focused or were focused on Kabanov is now going to be redirected elsewhere and there you can see where it's going and Johansa's air grid has just gone Johansa of course getting very strong with his ASF he's got his uh, gunships that have helped secure this area he also had that nuke that caused a lot of damage and his ability to reproduce that air is going to fizzle out now it's got a very forward chicken here. And it's gone behind a megalith. But the GC over there from Freedom. It's going to fix that quick. It's got a few gunships going after the megalith here. That's got 48 kills. 61,000 mass. I don't think... Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of engineers here from Team 1. 27, 30 kills. Look at this. 40 kills now for the Ion Storm. Does it really matter? We've got a support commander that's teleported through from Barmley. Trying to take out some of these different sats here. Almost got two of them. I think it did pick one. Let's see, Lagarde Domain at one point had five. He's now got three. They're currently working on Klaus's base. And the artillery is working on his base as well. He's got five pieces. There's three shells. Here's two more. And that's it. I think Klaus's base, who's got two emissaries, or had two. They're gone. Johansa realizes we can't stop this. He quits. Klaus has gone. His base has gone. Klaus quits. And with it, Barmley holds. And he realizes game is over. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic game. And how quickly did that collapse at the end? I do hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to leave a like if you did. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, take care from me here deep inside the UK. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care. Until next time, bye-bye. And don't forget, if you are interested in the one versus ones, do check out the Patreons. And yeah, take care. 
I've said take care already, let's just say ta -ra.